Welcome to Infoware. Um, today I want to talk about how uh, an estimated time of arrival is calcula calculated in a navigation software. So how is the drive time being calculated? So first of all, uh, what is the ETA? Um, ETA stands for estimated time of arrival and uh, you know it from your navigation system in Metrip it looks like this uh, down here it tells you when you're going to reach your destination. That is useful for you as a private person. Um, if you're a professional driver, there is a dispatcher in the background um, who usually uh, calculates and plans your day with that kind of information. So it must be very exact. Um, that There we go. So if you um, are a professional driver, you're not just going to one destination, you're going to multiple destinations throughout the day like in this case to seven different um, destinations. And if you have uh, an error in each of the route calculations of say five minutes, then that can add up during the day. And uh, while um, 10 minutes may still be t tolerable, um, it adds up during the day. And therefore uh, a precise ETA calculation is very important. So how is the ETA at all uh, calculated? Uh, what we have here is um, a very, very basic map um, and uh, we are here and this is our destination and these uh, dark gray lines are, uh, are the map. So let's assume that um, this distance here is one kilometer and that distance is also one kilometer. Forgive me, I know it's not quite to scale, but um, anyway, um, I think it's sufficient for the purpose. So that is our map. Um, now, what we also what we put on top of the map, uh, what you see on the map is the live traffic data, and that is very important. That comes from uh, sources like TomTom or here, and uh, these uh, green sections segments. Uh, the live traffic data tells us that the current traffic moves at 85 kilometers an hour on average uh, on those segments. Then the orange segments are traffic is moving at 40 kilometers an hour and the red segments are moving at 15 kilometers an hour or rather the traffic on it is moving at that speed. So there are still a number of segments which we don't have any information uh, on from the live traffic data. So we must make an assumption or based on our experience of course and let's just say for the sake of simplicity, let's just say it's 50 kilometers an hour is what we assume. It's more complex than that, but for the purpose of the explanation, that must be sufficient. Um, so these are values that are being measured, that are really reaching our servers from TomTom and from here, just when, when the route is being calculated. So this is live. This here is an assumption. Um, and uh, then the, the routing algorithm tries to figure out the best route and that's what it comes up with this uh, blue line so we go up move up two sections here and then we move along the green sections move up one more section here and then we have reached our destination and now the the ETA the drive time is being calculated so that is pretty straightforward now there are four segments representing four kilometers at a speed of 85 kilometers an hour. So if you do the math, um, you, that takes you three minutes to cover that. And three segments, one, two, three, uh, where you can drive 50 kilometers an hour, which adds up to another uh, 3.6 uh, minutes. In total, uh, the routing algorithm will tell you, you need 6.6 .6 minutes to reach your destination, okay? So that's how it works. Those are the basics. The question is, how accurate is our assumption here, the 50 kilometers? And also, this data is not always 100% correct. So what we want to do is we want to uh, calculate the drive time as precisely and realistically as possible. And how can we do that? So what we have done is we have um, told our navigation systems to tell us when they, uh, we wanted to compare 
what we calculate with the real world, with the actual drive time. So um, PowerPoint is difficult. So let's say one of our navigation apps calculates a drive time for any given route of 100 minutes. And then it tells us, uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to take 100 minutes. When it arrives, it measures the, the drive time and tells us again. So we can compare and say, okay, it has taken them uh, that device 110 minutes. That is an error of 10 minutes or a relative error of 10%. And we have done these measurements with a dedicated fleet over a given period of time and assumed really masses of data and compared that. And this is what we came up with. So what you're seeing here is a distribution of the relative error on routes that are between 10 and 30 kilometers long. So let me explain. If you look at this data point here, there are 300 routes and they have a relative error of drive time of 0%. So 300 routes were spot on. They arrived exactly at the, uh, at the moment when we predicted it. So that was re uh, really good. Next, here there were 150 routes. You can see it here, 150 routes with a relative error of roughly minus 10%. All right, next. Here there are 350 routes, you see this here, 350 routes with a relative error of roughly plus 10%. So what does plus and minus mean? Plus that side, this side of the scale means they have actually arrived faster than we anticipated or than we calculated. And this side of the graph means they have actually arrived slower than they uh, than we anticipated. Um, right. So um, and what do you what else can we see from that? We can see there that this is the mean error in average on average. It has taken we our calculation was plus nine percent off. So um, mostly the, the drivers arrived a little earlier than we anticipated. So this is the margin of error that we can correct in order to um, correct for our ETA calculation to be most realistic. Um, right. So these were routes from 10 to 30 kilometers. And what's interesting is, is if you compare routes that are between two and five kilometers long and what you see instantly is that the curve here is that the peak is more like this where here the distribution is wider so why is that so let's assume um, you have a route of two kilometers length imagine you're going from a to b two kilometers express logistics for instance uh, in an inner city and you calculate like two minutes drive time for those two uh, kilometers. Imagine you hit one red light. You're standing there for in front of that one red light for two additional minutes. The drive time was two minutes. Uh, the stoplight is red for two more minutes. So uh, you are off by already by 100%. So ETA calculation um, and planning uh, for these short routes is much more difficult and um, the, uh, the errors uh, are much, much higher. Uh, by contrast, if we look at routes from 100 to 200 kilometers, there a red light more or less is not really important. It doesn't change anything. Here you can see that the shape of the distribution is much, much more narrow and um, our, the, the error we make is much less. What's also interesting to see, remember that this side of the graph means people have been slower than we anticipated or the, the drive time has been longer than we anticipated. And here uh, this shows um, 
where people have been actually faster than we anticipated. So this means you can see that, that this flank of the curve here is going down very slowly, where here this is very steep. So what does this tell us? It tells us that these guys here have been stuck in traffic. Maybe a, a traffic jam occurred and they have been stuck in traffic for an hour or so. Or they did, they went on breaks. Uh, they um, took a break while they were uh, driving and the navigation was still running while they were not, uh, they weren't, weren't driving. So that's why this is going down very gently here. On the other hand, you can see that from this peak here on this side, there were very, very few people who managed to go faster than we anticipated. So there were quite a lot of people who who were round about like again, nine, seven, eight percent, something like that faster than we calculated. And then it goes down rapidly. So it is difficult. Our the, This fleet consists of trucks, so you cannot go. There are no trucks that will that'll go 200 kilometers an hour, so they will not appear in that. So that's why this it goes down so, so sharply. Um, right, and that's how we do it, and that's how we analyze uh, our um, drive time calculation. And then we adjust it a little bit, and we do that regularly uh, to provide the best uh, ETA calculation uh, possible. I hope you find this interesting and see you again soon. Bye.